Hi everyone! So if the lighting looks a little funny, my ring light is dying. I need to get a new one, but I want to get a nicer one, and I will do that when I get to it. So with that disclaimer out of the way, I did indulge a little bit because July is my birthday month, and I finally got my hands on the Trio Chrome palette right here. Here is what it looks like on the inside. Very pretty. I really particularly have been wanting it for a while because of how unique the mattes are in here. I high key think that the mattes in here are better pastel than pastel sometimes, which is why I've wanted it for so long, but not for full price. So she had a bundle where you get Biba and Trio Chrome, both of which have been on my wish list for, for years now. So I went ahead and got it, and I thought I would start off by doing three looks with Trio Chrome, and I think that'll be a lot of fun. I'm especially excited to do Scarab, so that's gonna be the first multi chrome we center the look around. I'm, I do really like Natasha Denona, and I'm not gonna apologize for that. Primed my eyelids using the P. Louise Eye Base. So I'm going to go ahead and dig in. So I am going to first start with this shade over here. I just, especially these greens, they're so like acid and sick feeling. Really, really just unique shades. that. And so I've wanted to get my hands on this for so, so long. Not even because of the multi-chromes, because I'm sure I have better performing ones in my collection. But mostly just because of the mattes. So I'm very, very excited. And I'm definitely going to be digging into this palette a lot for the mattes if I ever want like a very specific shade. I think it's so funny that it's a trio chrome palette, so it's supposed to be centered around these shimmers, but honestly, I wanted this for the mattes. I think it's so funny. But I'm definitely not the only one who feels that way. And that was so easy to put on. Always such a pleasure to work with. And then the one thing I do like about her big palettes, I will admit, is the mirror is a, is just a total indulgence. Nice to be spoiled by a big, nice mirror. And then I'm going to add some depth in scrap pukey green color. More like baby kitten green color, I could say. And I'm going to use this to build depth in the outer corner. Yeah, you can see I'm adding some depth there, and then I'm just going to kind of go between that and the previous shade to blend it. And then I'm going to go into a fluffier brush, and I'm going to use this shade here. And that's going to be the shade I use to blend everything out on top of my eyelid. It's just such an interesting color setup, and I just love how unique these colors are. I'm using a Wayne Goss 19. I used to really not like it, but I've washed it enough times it's softened up significantly and I like it a lot better now. I could add more depth if I wanted to, but I kind of like just keeping it right to the ends like this. It just adds some nice length to my eyes, so I'm going to go into Scarab now. I really wanted the liquid version of this for the longest time, but I just never could justify it because I was worried it would dry up on me. The powder form scarab will have to do. And I'm just going to lay this on with my finger. It is extremely smooth, so it's not going to be like super chunky or super sparkly feeling. It's just very, very smooth, which is kind of what I would expect from a trio chrome. And the nice thing is that I'm, you know, I'm diffusing it with my finger, but I'm not really seeing a dark base come through, making the look turn muddy. That is really nice. So just so you can kind of see it on my eyelids. This is what's left on my finger. And then I'm just going to blend it out a little bit from side to side ever so slightly, especially on the inner corner. And then I will this on the lower lash line. picks up so easily with a brush too, so really nice quality. It's just not got as much like of the impact, the kind of wow factor, the ooh, so shiny. It doesn't have that factor that indie brands have. Um, I feel like the closest to this shade would be like Patina maybe from Cleona, but I believe Patina has a much darker base than this does, which is why I feel like of all of the trio chromes in this palette, Scarab is definitely the one that's most unique and it has been the most difficult for me to think of a good duplicate for that doesn't have a dark base in particular. Particular. I think there's one from Davina as well I really like, Exosphere, but that also has a darker base. I'm gonna go back into that sickly pastel and just make sure the top is blended. I just love the acid green that this adds to the look. This is such a unique shade. 
I can definitely see merging mattes from pastel and here to create some really interesting looks. And then I was going to try and use just like a face highlighter or something for my inner corner, but I actually have a fun idea. I'm gonna go into the very, very light borderline white green shade here. And I'm just gonna have a matte inner corner today. I think that'll be a lot of fun. And it'll be a good chance for me to see just how opaque this shade is on its own. Cause I know light shades can sometimes just not really show up. And that's pretty much what it's gonna look like. I'm gonna take a little bit more and just kind of transition into the inner corner highlight a little bit better so it's not as abrupt. And that's the look. I'll put on one more layer of scarab, I think. I can't resist, this shadow is so pretty. It does build really well. It's like almost like as if with each new layer I put on, it becomes even more vibrant really cool and it does blend out really well too without turning muddy all right so this is going to be the finished eye look featuring scarab and the top row so i'm gonna finish off the rest of my makeup i'll be right back and then the next two looks are gonna use the next two rows it'll be nice and simple okay so i'm not the happiest with my face makeup but as i've mentioned a couple times already i'm never super good at matching green eyeshadow to the rest of my face but this is going to be the finished look. I just decided to do mascara only just because I know some people here prefer like, oh, I like it when I see your natural lashes because you, know, you don't wear false lashes or you just want to see what things look like without false lashes to kind of compensate. So here we are. It's just my naked lashes, which are not much to talk about, but at least they're visible. <laughs> so I did add some eyeliner um, on the inner corners and just some slight wings with some dark brown liner just to add a little bit more contrast. I felt like my look was a little bit lacking in that department. For my kind of bronzer contour situation, I just have the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. And then for blush, I ended up going into my Unlocked Ghost, or my Edit Ghost. I don't have Unlocked Ghost. I have Edit Ghost. I kind of just swirled my brush between these two shades to create this kind of pleasant pinky color that I thought would kind of match with the green a little bit. Um, not too bright, not too warm, not too cool. Just kind of just like a normal kind of boringish pink. For my highlighter, I did as my first birthday treat to myself, I finally managed to track down the Mac and Pony highlighters and I didn't actually end up paying all that much for them. So I honestly was pretty pleased with it. So today I'm using Sky's the Limit. Really pretty. Kind of has like a goldenish sheen, so I thought it would match. Yeah, you, you can't really get this anymore unless you like found it on eBay or something, which is what I ended up doing, so. And then for my lips, I went in with this Juicy Lasting Tint in papaya jam this is from their milk grocery collection i bought all the lip products from the milk grocery collection because it's me and i really like romand pretty simple look honestly everything is super low-key i find trio chrome to not really lend itself to like ultra complicated looks it's more just like doing a pretty look that center stages one of the multi chromes or trio chromes or whatever so I am a fan of how easy this turned out. The look was so easy to make, the mattes were so easy to use, and honestly, as I've mentioned, I am just so much more interested and excited about the mattes and trio chrome than the actual trio chromes. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this look using trio chrome. And with that, I'm gonna move on to the second look. Hi everyone. I haven't filmed in a several days because my ring light died, and as it turns out, I was it was good for me to decide to not film until my new lights came in because the transformer actually was about to explode. So if I had tried to film on it, I probably would have set something on fire. So we took a break, but we're back and I'm gonna work on the second row now and hopefully I can get back into the rhythm of things. So if the energy seems a little off or if my brows look kind of funny, it's just cause I haven't filmed in a while and I just apparently forgot how to do my camera makeup so oopsie poopses but I love just how unique these purples are definitely gonna dive into these okay I'm gonna go in with this shade here I'm gonna use that as kind of the base shadow so again none of these looks none of these three looks are really being super technically complicated I just really want to showcase the multi-chrome with the shades in the corresponding row because how Natasha Denona built her palettes is that you can use them in rows or in columns or in quads or whatever but this palette is definitely super row focused so i'm just going to stick with that so i'm just going to start building up this shadow and i'm just going to i'll worry about blending it out later it's what all the other shadows are for so and then i'm going to deepen it up with this shade right here 
Those, these lights are a lot brighter than my previous light setup, so the exposure may be a little high. I'll see what it looks like when I edit and I'll adjust for future videos, but don't mind me. And it is kind of late at night for me. I had a very, very busy day, so I'm gonna try and film this somewhat quickly so that I can go to bed because I have to wake up early for work tomorrow and I'm not a morning person at all. And then I'm gonna take Kinetic, which is the multi-chrome of this palette, so... Um, it definitely seems rather plain compared to like, you know, Cleona or Terra Moons, but at the same time, it does feel like it's gonna go on without like being too out there. Good for people who don't want to necessarily wear like an ultra shiny shadow. But yeah, as you can see, it's a, it's pretty basic to me. I'm not gonna be going into this palette for this shade. I'm probably actually never going to use its shade again. I'm going to use a brand new Hakuhodo brush, J146, and I'm going to go into this light little baby purple pink color, and I'm going to use this to blend above the shadows, or blend above the multi-chrome and kind of up towards my brow bone. This will add a nice amount of brightness. These mattes are just something else. I feel like I could make a better pastel palette using these mattes, which I remember watching Lauren May Beauty make the Natasha Denona pastel palette, and she actually did pull several shades from this palette to do that. Um, these mattes are just gorgeous. Yeah, these are just so pretty. And then I'm going to use, I'm gonna use the grayer one. I'm gonna use this one here. This is a lot more desaturated. It has a lot more gray tone to it. I'm going to use that on the lower lash line, smoke it out a little bit. So I'm not really gonna use it on the upper lash line just cause I don't want to. And then I'm gonna go back into manganese, which is that the darkest purple and I'm going to just build up a little more. I do really like how easy these mattes are to use. Even though they seem to be rather unusual colors, I feel like I'm just working with like any old neutral. This is so easy. And I did use the P. Louise base today so you could kind of see how it was a little tacky at first. The mattes seemed to kind of stick, but it all blends out so well, so, and then the P. Louise helps grab onto this multi-chrome, so that's kind of what I was going for. I'm gonna go into more kinetic now, and I'm just gonna build that up more using a firm, stiff brush. See if I can just get it to be a little bit more shiny. Just a little bit more, and then I'm going to take a little bit of it on the lower lash line, just like a little bit. That was a lot more than a little bit, but we'll stop there. And then I'm going to take a very tiny brush and I'm gonna go back into this shade here. And I'm going to use this to brighten up my inner corner since there is no light shimmer for the inner corner. Now, this palette definitely feels more like it should be treated as a companion palette or like just, you know, use your face highlighter or something. But I'm just gonna stick to this palette for this video. I've got kittens playing. Got a foster kitten here who doesn't like other kittens. She's very sweet. Yeah, so that just kind of adds some brightness. And now I'm just going to touch up the outer corner here. And that's gonna be about it. So let's do this all on the other eye because I completely forgot to work on the other eye while I was doing this. Repeat these steps and try and keep it symmetrical. Now I'm gonna add the darker purple. I'm doing this all with a Sonia G mini booster, by the way. I much prefer her sky set over her normal set. Okay, so now I'm going to, I'm gonna use I'm just gonna use a brush this time for the entire application of Kinetic. I don't wanna get my fingers dirty. I'm just using a short, stiff, synthetic brush. These do have a base, so as I blend them out, you can kind of start to see the base come through. I don't really mind too much, but it can look a little gray if you're not careful. Uh, on second thought, I am gonna use my finger because that didn't blend as nicely, versus my finger can kind of organically blend the edges. I rescued that, so now I'll go back in with this brush and intensify it. That almost was a disaster, but we but we pulled together. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's a little bit messy because I, I guess I was just rushing a little bit, but... And I'm going to put more purple on the other eye now. I got it nice and dark on my left eye, so I need to mirror that. I feel like there's a bit of a kind of a boundary between these two shades, so I'm just going to tap on a little bit more. 
There we go. And then lastly, I'll use that pink shade, Naka. I'll use that in, right in the inner corner. I kind of want to like blow out the outer corners just a little bit, so I'm going to take Redox. And I'm, I had previously only used this on the lower lash line, but now I'm just going to use it to kind of blow things out a little bit up here. It's a little bit, it's darker than Naga, so it'll actually like show. And this Hakuhoto brush is very, very airy, so it's kind of just wisping little clouds of shadow onto my eyelid. The right brushes definitely have a really big impact on my eyeshadow, so I've definitely noticed a really big difference with these. Alright, so I'm gonna call this done. As you can see here, the look is not complicated. Honestly, anybody could do this provided if like if you had this palette, you could do this really easily. And as you can see, this look in real time took me about 15 minutes to pull together, which is really not that bad. The multi-chrome itself is very, you know, basic, not necessarily super spectacular, but that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna finish off the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. This is going to be the final look. I think my exposure is a little is okay. Um, if it's too high, it'll be adjusted in future videos. I promise I'm, I'm promise I'm trying, but everything ended up, of course, looking pretty simple and subdued because the eye look in and of itself is honestly not super, super deep. I added some winged liner and a little bit of brown on the inner corners just for some definition. I have Cloud9 from Doe Lashes as my lashes. My cute little kitten. Hello. My cute little kitten. Look at my cute little kitten. Isn't she cute? Look, she, 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 look, you gotta see it. She got cinnamon bun. She's a cinnamon bun kitty. I know you're the cutest. Okay. Lower lash mascara, the whole deal. And then for the rest of my face, I kept it pretty light. I didn't even put on highlighter because my eyes are not super shiny and I didn't want to override my eyes. So basically for this look, I let the eyes kind of set the intensity of my entire face and then everything else is lighter. So there's really very little product on the rest of my face. I used the Kaleidos Contour Palette in Warm and medium. I really wish I had the light and cool, but as far as I can tell, I don't know if those are ever coming back. So whenever I use this, I mix the top two shades and it gives a very subtle contouring effect on the outer part of my face. Really nice formula. I wish I could get my hand on the right shade of this. Like I just, I wish so bad. This was, this was, um, this was gifted to me by someone else. For my cheeks, I used two blushes. I used Kylie Cosmetics Pink Power, which is here. And then I used Nice Pink from Peri Para, which is here. One of their newer shades. I finally got my hands on it. They're both fine. As you can see, they're both extremely light pink. So it's barely visible on me. It's more, it's much more visible in real life, which is why I think I need to turn my like exposure down because the lights are so bright now. But, um, I promise I can see it in real life but it's just like that light baby pink vibes and then I used kind of just a glowy finishing powder to add a little bit of glow back to my face while mattifying everything else because this summer in North Carolina is like it's like death outside you walk outside and it feels like death and for the lips I line my lips and then I use the Roman juicy lasting tint in bare fig it's gonna be the shade here it's from their new milk grocery collection so that's gonna be this look I'm gonna sign off now and you guys will see the third and final look and hopefully the lighting will be a little bit better we'll see no promises <laughs> but yeah on to the next look Hi everyone! Okay, I'm back for the third and final look using Trio Chrome. We're gonna tackle the last row, which has the most kind of interesting spread of colors. So these two top rows are extremely analogous, but this one has a little complementary injection of orange here. So I think this will be kind of the most interesting look by far. Um, I have a very vague idea of what I think I want to do, but we'll see. Uh, this is like my least favorite multi-chrome, the orange, purple, green. It's kind of my least favorite because I find it to be the most difficult to work with. But I'm here to do the look. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. I used the P. Louise base and I'm going to just get into it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this brown shade here. I'm going to use that as my base. I might use this to blend out. I think I'll put this on the inner corner. On the brush, it looks a little bit like it has a bit of an orange tinge to it. So interesting. I'm just going to... Oh, it's much darker on my eyelid than in the pan, which I find Natasha Denona mattes can do that sometimes. They kind of catfish you a little bit. But for her powder formula, I guess, yeah, this isn't the first time I've used a powder matte from Natasha Denona and had it turn out darker on the eyelid. With her cream, the powder formula is usually the other way around. I'm gonna start off with this shape because of where I want to put the orange later, and I'll blend everything out later. All right, that's a good basic shape so far. So now I'm going to put that on the lower lash line as well. All 
Okay, so a good base to start with. So now I'm going to take a flatter brush. I'm going to take plutonium and that's going to go on the inner part of the eyelid as I stated earlier. Kind of like right there, I think it'll work. Just kind of following the eye socket, my natural eye socket. This eye is a little bit messier, but it always ends up being like one eye is nice, one eye is not. But that's kind of the general shape I'm going for. And I apologize, I think this whole video is going to end up, well the second, the whole last two looks of this video are both going to end up on the overexposed side. I still need to tune my camera settings to better fit the new lighting setup that I have. I completely ditched a ring light, um, and I think these lights are brighter than what I used to have, which is, you know, it's what I wanted, but I do need to adjust my camera settings so that it's not as exposed. And then I'll pop a little bit on the lower lash line. Just kind of warms up the lower lash line, looks really nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into that multi-chrome or trio chrome shade called Color Flip. It's like my least favorite shift but I have to use it, so I'll just have to suck it up. <laughs> and funnily enough, it kind of reminds me of the shade that Pat McGrath has in her Divine Rose 2 and Utopian Dreams, and I just think it's so funny that it's my least favorite, but it just seems to be popping up everywhere and I can't avoid it. And I'm gonna stick that right here. It goes on very smoothly, it's very pretty. Yeah, I thought maybe I would put it further back, but then I thought maybe it'd look good here, but maybe that was a mistake. Hmm, not really feeling where I put it over here. I'm gonna see if I can cover it up a little bit. I think there might have been some sage shade contamination on this, but it's all right, we'll work with it. Okay, I'm gonna shift where I put that trio chrome. I'm gonna put more kind of down here. Yeah, I think that'll work a little bit better to put it there instead of where I had it earlier. Like all the way up here is not a good look, but that's a little, that's a little light. I can't do much about that. I mean, it is nice. I can see, you know, I can see the shifts. I just, it's just the inherent nature of the shift is just not my favorite. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Okay, so I had to like take a couple minutes break because Miso was sleeping with his belly up again. So of course I had to like take pictures, but in that time I have come back and I'm now reevaluating this look to see what I can do to improve it because it's just not what really my favorite. But I gotta say, it might just be the fact that I just don't like this trio chrome. Also, if you see this spot here, I just have a bump on my eyelid, so excuse that. But let's try and salvage what we can, make this something that I like a little bit more than I otherwise would. I'm going to take more of plutonium and I'm just gonna try and intensify this shade a little bit more really just make it nice and obvious above the trio chrome and try and like draw some of the attention to it it'll make it look cool I guess and brush went into the wrong spot and then I'll take more of that and I'm going to work that onto the outer corner area to kind of like echo the color um, I did this in my Cleonud video put the green in these two places. Definitely a very easy trick to do to kind of make your look look more complicated than it actually is, is to just put the same color in two places. Yeah, I just, I muddled it all up choosing to put the trio chrome here and then trying to cover it up has more or less just kind of muddled up the whole outer corner, so there's not really much I can do about that at this point. And then I'm just going to kind of close the gap. It's a look. I did it. Um, I, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm not happy with this look, but it looks like something it turned out. I'm wondering what'll happen if I use my finger and apply the matte shade more heavily. Let's see if that does anything to like kind of smooth things over if I use my finger. I know her mattes are actually surprisingly finger friendly, so let me try this really quick. Yeah, I definitely applied way more pigment on top, so um, let me try and blend this out. I think the finger helped a little bit. I just like put on a lot more pigment because I've been using mostly like kind of softer brushes. All my good brushes need to be washed again. Okay, and then lastly for the inner corner, I'm going to use the... Um, I'll take that bone colored shade, the one that I other wouldn't have used otherwise, and I'll just use that to see if I can like brighten up my inner corners a little bit. 
If this wasn't three looks, one palette, I definitely would be using like my face highlighter or something. It's like slightly darker than the actual color of my skin, but it's better than nothing. I don't think I can get it much better than this. I think this is going to have to be what I call it. I'm not even going to put this on the lower lash line because I fear it will really become too messy that way. So I'm just going to leave the lower lashes clean. I'm just going to call this look here. I'm going to finish up everything else, put my makeup on. I'll be right back. Um, I'm going to put on some lashes to see if I can rescue this look a little bit. So yeah, I'll be right back. This is gonna be my finished look. It is, it's all right. With the rest of the makeup on, it looks all right. And from far enough away, it kind of just looks like an amped up neutral look, honestly. It's like, I guess from far away, it almost could pass as just like a really simple daytime appropriate look for someone like me. From far away, it looks all right, I guess you could say. Um, it could be worse. Close, you can kind of start to see where I was unable to really keep the look looking really distinctive. It looked, I made it look kind of muddy but it happens sometimes. <laughs> um, I have Cloud9 on from Doe Lashes, that's it. Just some really simple lashes, and then I just have a little bit of lower lash mascara because I am gonna be washing mm -hmm. this off in a little bit. For the rest of my face, I have the Pat McGrath blush in Flirtatious. It is a, it is pretty much a beigey, bronzy blush. It's the most neutral tone blush in her line, so I just thought it would work with this look since this look otherwise is pretty boring. I actually, looking at this look, it reminds me of the look I did with the ColourPop Mandalorian, palette i feel like this is like a more subtle version of that um for highlighter i did use a little bit of the romand highlighter in o2 it's just this really soft shade here these highlighters mm -hmm. from romand are super super subtle so i like to use them when i want highlighter but i don't want to like be beaming so you can see just how soft that is i didn't put any on my nose because like it's it's hot and it's humid so my nose is generating its own glow <laughs> And that's gonna be that. And then for the lips, I line my lips and then I use the YSL Slim Velvet Radical Lipstick in 28. It's the black packaging lipstick here. I've definitely said it a couple times on my channel that I'm like low-key kind of obsessed with the YSL lipsticks and it's a really bad thing because they're so expensive. But that's gonna be this look. That's gonna finish the three looks, one palette using Trio Chrome. This is definitely not my favorite palette to work with. Um, Just like take out one palette and use it for the look. This is not gonna be a palette I'm gonna do that for. This is definitely a really ideal companion palette for me, especially because these mattes are just otherworldly. I love the quality of the mattes and they are are just such odd colors but regardless that's going to be my thoughts on this palette these looks are not my best so i do apologize my brain is not braining my brain cells are not here my brain is currently like smooth brain no thought head empty kind of situation but like with a side of depression so we're we're full of depression and no thought but other than that, I'm going to close off this video. If you guys have any questions about this palette, please feel free to ask me. Or if you have any other questions about other palettes, feel free to ask me. I do have a lot of eyeshadow palettes. I mean, I like them. All right. Goodbye.